Sitting pretty here in sole red crystal is the Mazda 3 hatchback. Now in the past, this small car has been one of our favorites here on Chasing Cars. It looks pretty cool. It's got a nice engine and the ride and handling is among the best in the class. But is that still true in 2023? Because this shape of Mazda 3 is actually coming up on five years old this year, which feels hard to believe, but it's true. In today's video, I'm gonna take you through what the Mazda 3 gets right, what it gets wrong, and what other cars in this segment you should consider. And the one that I've got here is quite interesting because it's the Mazda 3 Evolve, a nice specification. And this one is the G20e Hybrid. So is it worth buying the hybrid in the Mazda 3? We'll find out, but before we start, hit subscribe. Chasing Cars, honest reviews of your next car. Brought to you by Budget Direct. One of the things that the Mazda 3 continues to get so right is its interior. I still think that this is the best interior in the mainstream small car segment in Australia. And it's pretty amazing that you can pick up a Mazda 3 from 27 grand before on-road costs in this country. The spec I'm sitting in here is the G20e Evolve hybrid hatch. It's 33 grand, but a lot of the goodness that you see here, you get in the regular non-hybrid Evolve, which is 29 plus on-road costs. And I think that car is probably better value than this hybrid. The hybrid does pick up a few nice features like a power driver's seat and full keyless entry with push button start. All cars get push button start, but not where you can just grab the door handle and open it. But one weird quirk is that the hybrid system really drives up the price. For less money than this car, you can actually get the G20 Touring, which has leather seats as well. And I know some people like those, but today it's boiling here in Australia and the cloth seats of this particular Mazda 3 are so much better for regulating heat. Not only is the material better, they're shapely, supportive, the electric adjustment is really generous, the driving position is low, the steering wheel feels great, leather wrapped steering wheel with paddle shifters and metal accents. So the ergonomics are beautiful and everything falls right to hand from these knurled tactile climate control switches to the rotary controller for the MZD Connect infotainment system, which is not a touchscreen. So a lot of people don't like that. It's subjective. You can tell me below in the comments what you reckon. But many of the materials in here are far more plush than what you'll find in rival cars like the Kia Cerato or even the Mark 8 Golf, which is crazy. Soft on the dash, on the doors, even where your leg rests. The Mazda 3 feels more like an Audi than a Volkswagen. And that's one thing that we love about this car particularly because the price continues to be really fair. However, the CarPlay isn't wireless. The standard stereo is just okay, and only the top of the range gets the Bose. And storage could be a little bit better, though I like this trick opening and folding center armrest here. Your backseat passengers will need to duck their head as they get in under this slinky little roof line, but once they do, they'll find that the Mazda 3 hatch has a generous enough backseat. It's certainly pretty cozy back here and dark, because the seats are dark gray and the headliner is black, which is sporty, but it does make you feel a bit more closed in. However, the room on offer is sufficient for adults. I'm six foot, this seat's in my driving position. Uh, leg room is good, there's a bit of a cutout for backseat knees. Headroom is actually fine, which is surprising, and toe room is decent. I can feel the seat, but it's okay. Now in a very, very pinch, you could get someone in the middle seat here, but it's not super generous. But I think for like a weekend away with friends, four adults in this car will go fine, but the boot might not have space for all their stuff. You do get air vents here in the back. The materials are actually, wow, that's, I was not expecting that. They're still soft here in the back. And you do get an armrest here as well with two cup holders, which is nice and generous. So it's got a big car feel in the second row. For the same price, you can get the Mazda 3 as a hatchback or as a sedan. And it's a sedan with a bigger boot, though it does look more conservative and a lot of people like this hatchback. Pop open the manual tailgate, that gets out of your way quickly but it only reveals 295 litres of space, which is a lot smaller than something like a Volkswagen Golf or a Hyundai i30. But at least it's big, it's square. It's a bit of a lift over here, though underneath the boot floor, you'll find a space saver spare tire. Not as good as a full size, but certainly nice peace of mind. And check out this cool little luggage cover, which gets out of your way and conceals your stuff. Plus a button to lock the car from the keyless entry system, which is nice. When it comes to running costs, the Mazda 3 isn't too expensive to keep on the road. In terms of fuel consumption, this really is a very mild hybrid. It's probably not worth buying the hybrid in the Mazda 3 unless you want the extra equipment 
that you also get with the hybrid, things like keyless entry and a power driver's seat over and above the regular Evolve. And that's because the hybrid is claimed to use six liters per 100 Ks, but the non-hybrid is 6.2 liters per 100 Ks. So there's not much of a difference. In my driving, I was easily able to get seven liters per 100 kilometers. Now out of its 51 liter fuel tank, that's gonna give you a range of about 730 kilometers, pretty usable, and it's gonna cost you around 100 bucks to fill at $2 per litre. But something like a Toyota Corolla Hybrid is much more frugal, but it also has a much longer wait list. Five years of servicing, 50,000 kilometres will set you back around $1,700 at current prices here in Australia. And the warranty, that's five years, unlimited kilometres, standard for the industry. The first big choice you have to make when you're deciding on a Mazda 3 is what engine you want, because Mazda has a few of them now. There's the G22 litre, the G20e 2 litre mild hybrid, which we're driving now, the G25 2.5 litre, and also the X20 Skyactiv-X, which is way too complicated to explain in a short period of time. So I'm just gonna concentrate on the G20, the G20e, and the G25, because really you can't go wrong with any of them. The G25 is quite powerful, 140 kilowatts of power and 250 newton meters of torque, occasionally a couple of numbers each way, depending on tune. And that's plenty in a small car, but in actual fact, for most people, the G20 or G20e with 114 kilowatts of power and 200 newton meters of torque is gonna to be feisty enough for most purposes, even overtaking on the open road. And that's because these engines have a high compression ratio and they really like to rev. Plus, they're paired with a pretty well-sorted six-speed torque converter automatic transmission or a six-speed manual where you get to choose your own gears. And Mazda still offers a manual on every trim of the Mazda 3, which is really cool. So there's not too many small cars where it's quite difficult to go wrong no matter which engine or transmission you pick, but the Mazda 3 is kind of one of those cars. You would just choose a bigger engine if you wanted to go a bit faster. And we did time the G20e from zero to 100, and we got a result of 8.89 seconds. So not super fast, but also not super slow. At least it sounds actually quite cool while it's going, because this engine has a pretty rorty exhaust note. And in actual fact, it's the engine shared with the MX-5, although that car doesn't get the mild hybrid system yet, although it probably is coming soon. So engine-wise, the Mazda 3 is pretty well sorted. In terms of ride and handling though, it's important to note that the Mazda 3 is definitely a little bit more biased towards sporty driving than a lot of other small cars. And that's particularly evident from the ride, which is always firm. That's not usually a problem because the dampers are pretty well adjusted in the Mazda 3, but occasionally you'll hit a bump, particularly at low speeds, something like a bit of road which has come away and it can be quite jarring and abrupt through to the cabin. So you're always feeling what's going on on the road but most of the time it's not uncomfortable. It's just reminding you that this is actually a fairly sporty car. And of course, that's something that a lot of people really like about the Mazda 3. And it's something I like about it too, because on a back road, it really comes alive with lovely steering. It's a little bit heavier steering than some rivals have, but of course, that does make you feel like it's a little bit more athletic, I suppose. And it's got a great chassis. It really works with you as a driver. It's actually a really nice thing to drive. I think it feels more interesting from behind the wheel than something like an i30, although vehicles like the Volkswagen Golf and even the Toyota Corolla continue to be good competition for this car from a driving dynamics perspective. Now the Mazda 3 is pretty quiet, it's pretty refined. Um, people like me used to whinge a lot about Mazdas being really loud and that's something that the company put a lot of work into about five years ago and since that point the cars have actually been remarkably quiet and this is one of those vehicles it's remarkably refined inside now in terms of safety features it's pretty well equipped um, out of the factory you've got stuff like aeb you've got adaptive cruise control but you can also go for a vision package which is going to add things like a 360 degree camera and semi-autonomous driving at low speeds for traffic jams which is quite a handy feature to have as well now visibility in the hatch could be a lot better that's because of those pretty luscious looking pillars back there you can tell they look pretty thick and that's how they appear from the driver's seat the sedan's a little bit better in that regard and another thing that's kind of important to think about with the sedan is it's actually a little bit softer at the front end a bit more tuned for american tastes than european tastes and so if you want a slightly more comfortable mazda 3 then you're going to want to go for the sedan in this case
So that's my opinion of the Mazda 3 in 2023. This model continues to be really relevant this year, even though a few facets of the car are starting to feel a little bit dated. The price continues to be incredibly fair, and particularly compared to a small SUV, you get so much Mazda 3 for your money. If it was my cash, I'd be buying the non-hybrid G20 Evolve with the manual transmission, saving a thousand bucks, and Mazda makes a beautiful manual. However, if you want an auto, they work great as well. I think the other end of the range, the G25 Astina, is also worth a look if you want a little bit of luxury. Leather seats, heated seats, sunroof, bows, all that good stuff. And that car is also fairly, fairly priced, I would say, but I'd probably go for the Evolve where the best value for money is. Now, you can let me know what you think down below in the comments. While you're there, hit subscribe, hit that notification bell. As always, thanks for watching, Chasing Cars.